I actually wanted to be a professional photographer when I was growing up. I had the DSLR slung around my shoulder. I was taking pictures of my friends. I even had a photography blog on Tumblr, but I decided to go into something easier, writing. I always wondered what it was like to be a professional photographer. Is it as challenging as I always imagined it is? It seems like an absolute hustle, but how do these professional photographers go out there, make money, and get their photography out in the world? What is the job of being a photographer really like? I love making people feel good when they see themselves in my photos. I love the confidence boost I see from people. I love when they light up. That's Raven B. Verona. She's a photographer that specializes in portraits and concerts. When I saw Raven's Instagram, I was blown away. I just saw all of these pictures of like Beyonce and Jay-Z and John Legend. And I was like, oh my gosh, this person just gets to spend their days photographing these legends. I would define my work as intimate. I feel like it's intimate. I feel like it's bold. There is a feminine perspective to it um, that is very personal to me. I would overall say that when you look at my work, you can tell that I have a relationship with my subject and I want you to feel that same relationship. So let's look deeper behind her amazing photography. I really want to know, how did she start? When I first started and I picked it up, I was like in my late teens and it was just a hobby. I liked photographing my friends. I liked photographing parties, things we were doing. And then I started getting like, I started going like little underground shows, concerts, things in the city because I'm born and raised in New York. And then I started getting asked to do like little events here and there. This is like all in the span between like 20 and 25. So I was doing photography on the side as a hobby, but also as like a side gig. And then I had like a, like a, day, a day job um, and it was mostly like music, street style stuff, um, portraits. It, it was a little mix of everything, but it was just basically what my environment was. And then at 25, I was like, okay, well, I've been doing this like as a side hustle for five years. It seems like it's picking up. I was starting to get asked to like shoot more events. I was like, maybe I should just go into it all in. And so I quit my day job and I went freelance. How do you get permission to like go into a concert venue with the camera? I've always wondered that. You either sneak in your camera, but you have no access and you shoot from the crowd. You get permission from the said venue itself. So you're shooting for the venue. You can be shooting for the said artist. So you get the pass from the artist, which pretty much will allow you full access to document the artist, the show, be in the pit, be anywhere you want. Or you get like a media pass where there are some places that are like, oh, we'll let you shoot if you're shooting for Vibe or you're shooting for XXL, you're shooting for Complex. I mean, in my early days, there were days that I like snuck into places, brought my camera in. Like Made in America, I didn't have a pass. I mean, I had like a ticket, but I didn't have a pass. So I shot from the crowd and I just had like a zoom lens. A lot of it is, again, like relationships. Like in 2010, I like became really good friends with a bouncer at like um, Irving Plaza. So anytime there was a show in Irving Plaza, he would say like, hey Raven, there's a show, do you wanna come shoot it? We'll get you a media pass. And I, I shot so many concerts there. Like I shot J. Cole, YG, I shot Little Kim there, The Dream. Network, network, and then network some more. And don't worry about networking with already established people. I mean, they're obviously good to know, but it's also good to network with people who are at your level. Growing with others is gonna help you tremendously. And so when you were shooting those shows in the early days, what did you end up doing with the photos? Like, did you just add them to your portfolio? Were you trying to sell them? What did that look like for you? Um, I never sold them. Uh, I think I've always been really fearful of like using someone's likeness without permission. I would be highly against recommending it for people. I definitely say get permission because you don't want to get caught up later on in life. A lot of it, I was like, instantly putting on social media, which is why I feel like it was gaining so much traction and why people beca became so invested in me. I would be at the show, my camera was wireless, so I would directly send the photos from my camera to my phone. I would be editing them in real time, posting them in real time, and it was providing an experience for people who weren't there to feel like they were there. So I felt like that's what really grew my engagement. Um, another thing was I was sending it to the artist. So I would like 
post them online and I would like um, at the artist and tag them, which was like kind of creating this relationship so people knew if they saw me, I'd be taking pictures and they knew they could come back to me. But it was also allowing them to reshare the photos, which is another way that was like building my brand and building like, I guess, a, a name for myself. What does the day-to-day look like um, for a photographer? For me personally, um, it varies. There are days, depending on what I'm working on, there are days where I'm up very early at like 7 a.m. because I have to be on set for a shoot and the call time is is like 6.45, 7, and I'm on set for like 12 hours and I'm um, like the pre-production is me talking to my lighting assistant and coming up with a creative concept and drawing up mood boards and things of that nature. But then there's also just like a side of like going out and just shooting for the thrill of it, shooting for yourself, shooting personal projects, um, connecting with other people, uh, looking for inspiration. But overall, it's really just a matter of depending on what sh- what the shoot is. Because there are shoots that like, there's a lot that goes into it pre, like I've said. And then there are shoots that I just like, hey, we need you here at 1 p.m. We need you to take this portrait. I'm there for an hour. I come home. I spend hours editing and selecting photos and going through all, all that process. So I'd love to hear about some of the misconceptions of the photography industry. Like, you talked a little bit about how it's not just shooting photos. There's a lot of like after work. Um, I'm sure it's not all like glitz and glamour, like photographing these amazing celebrities, even though it looks like it. But what are some of the, the misconceptions? Time moves very differently when you're photographing somebody, whether you think you have seven hours and you don't account for hair, makeup, the per- how the person is feeling. That seven hours could very easily turn into you having an hour with said person. Um, When it comes to shooting celebrities, the motto to me is hurry up and wait. It's also like physically really exhausting, to be honest, like carrying equipment. You're on your feet all day. You know, if I'm in shape and I feel healthier, I can like squat for hours to take a picture. I can be running around and and when I'm not in shape, I can't do that. Okay, let's talk money. What should you charge as a photographer? Like, especially if I'm just getting started, like how do I know how to value my work? Okay, Kelsey, let me tell you something. It is, I've been working for a decade, and that is the hardest. I tell you, you can ask any creative person. It is the hardest thing to put a value on your work. Like, even now, like, I'm trying to figure out my prints and my prices, and I'm just like, this is so uncomfortable. I'm definitely probably an underbidder when it comes to my work. Like, some people go by hour. Like, they say, I charge 100 an hour. I charge... 200 hour, 50 an hour, but this is include, like the deliverables are like, I'm gonna give you 20 edited photos or whatever the case is, or two looks. So there are people that go about it that way. There are people that just have a day rate. Um, I would advise people that are starting first, think about how much money do you need to live? Like, what is your budget? What would you, if you were looking for a regular nine to five job, you know, there are certain, there's a certain criteria you go for with a salary. I would, I say, a apply that to your photography as well. So maybe you're starting out and you're like, you know what, I just need to make $30,000 a year, let's just say, and you factor that out. And then you're like, okay, if I'm trying to do three shoots a month, I will price point it at this because I feel like this is what my work is worth. But I also feel like when you're working with companies or you're working with brands or people that are seeking you out, you should always ask them, what is their budget? Chances are it's probably a little higher than what you were going to ask for anyway. So you might have done a photo shoot for $300 and then you say like, hey, what is your budget or what are you looking to spend for this shoot? And they might say, oh, I'm looking to spend $600. And now you've doubled what you were going to ask just from simply like having that back and forth. Um, And also I would tell people, especially new photographers, to factor in the post work that you do. Like you might be on set with somebody for two hours, but then you're home for five hours editing the photos and retouching them and and those things. So definitely don't um, undersell yourself. People will pay for work they want. There is money to be spent. and There is a lot of money in the world. So please do not feel like you can't ask for it, especially if you are a woman and especially if you are a woman of color. That's a good lead into my next question, which is I feel like a lot of the times creatives, especially they're told like you should do work for free to get experience and exposure, which like I'm totally not here for, but is that kind of like still the vibe in like creative industries these days? 
I agree in doing work. I don't think you should be slaving yourself for free, but I think if you can look at an opportunity and see that there's no opportunity cost or loss to it and you can only grow from it, then I would say go for it. You know, there's been so many times I've worked for free, so many things I haven't been paid for, things that you show, I, I mean, shows across the board I wasn't getting paid for until I toured so I had probably shot over a hundred concerts before my first tour that weren't paid but those photos I enjoyed doing I liked sharing them they got me to a space so um, I wouldn't recommend maybe you know slaving or interning for someone like a hundred hours a week but I definitely believe when it comes to photography photographing stuff to me is not always free work it's beneficial to you so I encourage it Okay, question, and it's going to be about Beyonce and Jay-Z because okay. it's got to be. <laughs> what is it like photographing Beyonce and Jay-Z? Um, it is iconic. <laughs> it is um, pretty life-changing. I think they're, they work at such a, the highest caliber, and like photographing them makes you want to even be better. It's like this um, magnetic energy you get from working with people that are so good at what they do that you're like, oh my God, like I have to work harder. I have to sharpen my needle. What are the skills and kind of mindset I should have kind of going into um, a career in photography? There's a lot of photographers nowadays. So like it can be easily discouraged or you can feel like, okay, well this person is already doing this. So how do I get a job here? But I feel like it, it's forcing the photographers that are new to really tap into what is unique about them. I think one of the most interesting things I learned and something that I really take to heart is the idea that just because there's a lot of people who have the same dream as you doesn't mean it's not achievable for you. I also really respect the fact that she took something she was passionate about, photography, and turned it into a side hustle and then turned that side hustle into a full-time job. Like that takes a lot of guts and bravery and determination. It's the one thing in my life that it always like puts me in a good mood. No matter how hard it is, it just makes me feel like I have a purpose. I love making people feel good and I think that my work does that for them and so I love it. Thanks for watching. Do you have a career crush? Tell us about them in the comments and we'll see if we can talk to them for you. Subscribe to our channel to see more interviews with people actually living the dream. Bye.